Well, well, well. There we go then. Examines podcast. Uh, I don't even know what's going on here, to be honest. Seems, uh, haha, <laughs> got a bit weird, but who knows? Uh, yeah, so, well, let's see what's, uh, what's going on here then. Shooby dooby doo. Somebody says his mic clicks or something. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Anyway, so it's just practice at this stage. <laughs> Oh, it oh, must be. Uh, well, Crystal Charmin says we can hear you now, so apparently it's working. So, oh, nice one. Yeah, it's just, I've had a, my computer's been acting a bit funky all week. I don't know what's, but I just, I find if I stress about it, it makes it worse. <laughs> well, well, yes, cooking with gas. Well, let's just start over then. A little practice run. It'll be dead good now then, won't it? Hey, let's get some cam, camera business on. Ooh, so Valentine's Day. Well, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Maybe well, maybe well. Yeah. Oh, I booked a book some guests. I've got some guest booking done on for the show. I've got some people getting scheduled in and that. I'm gonna try. I've done a show based today on astrotheology. There's a guy I'd like to get on, but we'll we'll get into it. But yeah, get this guy on on the show hopefully soon. Santos. Seen him do a an interview. Of a guy called James Swagger, Irish guy. Used to have Capricorn Radio back in the day on YouTube. One day he just Give up, disappeared. Apparently, I tried to find the guy, but apparently, just thought, right, I'm living in Peru. So, so he disappeared. But I saw, luckily, I saw Santos, a guy called Santos on there. It's a really cool guy, real flamenco guitarist as well. That was side, side note there. But yeah, I did a show based on uh, some stuff that I'd seen of him uh, back in the day. And then I uh, did, um, did a bit of research. So, I'm going to try and get this guy on. Got Dr. Shani Brogan coming on next week. Hopefully, uh, we should be doing a show on Voodoo on Thursday. I've asked her if we do that. She knows her stuff. But anyway, this week, today, EMP, Exam Minds Podcast, episode 17, Astrotheology. Thanks to the listeners. Yes, Santos Bocan. Yeah, you know the guy. Yeah, Christopher Sean. Yeah, he's a good guy. He seems, I think he's a flat, I think he might be a flat earther, and I'm not. So that'll be, that could be cool if we drop on that in the end, because he seems really reasonable dude as well. So he knows his stuff, man. So, yeah, get Santos on, hopefully, if you can find him. But anyway, I've got a show based on a lot of some stuff. I I found some of his work, and I did a show because he knows he's about his condolina. So I did Santa Claus one. This kind of jumps off the back of it. So show Christmas about, oh, there might, might be another meaning to Santa Claus other than is a mushroom, you know, <laughs> and a fat present giver. But, yeah, so... so, so Right, so today's show, Examines Podcast, look at the stars, we'll play deep into the darkness, steer at the abyss, and in this case, indeed, the abyss does steer back and shows us, apparently. <laughs> so this is curious. I thought we better check this one out. So yeah, like I've mentioned, inspired by the work of uh, Santos Bonacci, it seems like a cool dude, so do a bit of a big up show, and then he might be <laughs> more entitled to come on later. Anyway, overview today for biochemistry, alchemy, and astrology. You know, like biochemistry, biology. We'll have a look. Because this got me... So I like look at the patterns in the stars and look at them zodiacs. Yeah, and I think, why them pictures? Why them? I'm sure if you stare at the sky long enough, you can probably come up with all sorts. Look, whale playing golf, a monkey and a chicken. You know, I'm sure there's loads of stuff you could come up with. But yeah. Let's uh, let's have a look at that then, because I thought, why is it these? Why is it these? What, what is it? That as above, so below thing. So I want to look at the pattern in the stars, and yeah, see if it's not it's not just made up exactly. There's a bit of science behind it. So yeah, I thought I'll have a look at that one today. Perhaps goes away some way to explaining that uh, famous uh, J.P. Morgan quote, where he says, "Millionaires don't need astrologers, but billionaires do." Uh, let's do something to it. And if you're into Jordan Maxwell, uh, symbology master, yeah, Jordan Maxwell, he often says it's all about astrology. It's to, uh, you know, the astronomy stuff. And they're all into astrology. That's what they're doing, magic. So anyway, get some pictures up. Symbolism. Let's look at this first. So we'll start with, in the Europe, we've got Christianity, worship the sun, right? And in in the ancient history, 
course, we had the Egyptians, famous for worshiping the sun. The Vatican, you know, Catholicism, the Christian Church, most prominent religion in Europe, a lot of followers. The Vatican is also known for being associated with the sun, obviously, but they were literally got a satellite watching the sun. The classical Romans and Greeks, so too, looked at the sun. Here's some of the symbols for the sun there. Just have a look for some of the viewers. The Helios. Okay. So Greek Helios. In Egypt, atom, like the atom, because the atom with an electric core and magnetic bodies orbiting, right? Just like planets. So interesting, they called it the atom with a U, but then U's and vowels are interchangeable between language. I don't know if you know that. So atom becomes atom, and amon is amen as well. You can swap the vowels over. So, yeah, so in Egypt, Egypt we've got the, the atom is the sun, so electric core orbiting just like atoms. And the same seven characters tend to keep reappearing, you know, not just in the Christian religion, but not just the other places and other scriptures throughout history. You get these, this number seven coming up. Lucky number seven, right? Billy Meyer, contact notes, used to talk about the aliens saying there's seven layers how the universe is made, describing it like a body sort of thing. Oh, that's the skin layer that's in you, whatever. So seven, same seven characters keep reappearing. Christian religion. But then you'll notice if you look up, as above, so below, there's seven orbs in the sky. They're like the components of atoms. They're called the cosmocraters in Egyptian. And, and and with the as above, so below thing, this is the demiurge. This is what the Christians talk about. We talk about God, the form. We're talking about the bodies rather than, so not the prime source. So when we talk about God here, we're not talking about the prime source because the prime source is in the ether it can't be defined you know you can't describe that thing we know god as love and light from the bible but you can't really describe it so when we're talking like the divine here we're talking about the stars and here as above so below space sort of thing so make that definition because the ether has no definition does it yeah and this whatever prime source dwells there you can't it's indescribable. I suppose it's like the Lovecraftian stuff. You can't say the names, you know. You collapse into madness if you try to see it, sort of thing. So, yeah. So, you've got these seven characters that keep coming up, like the components of the atoms, and and then there are four scriptures that do try to define God, but it's like so it's the demiurge. So, so then it describes in Palms 8411, it will say, well, for the Lord. Is the sun and the shield. But that's, I would say, the biggest governor around these parts, the biggest sheriff around this town is uh, it is the sun, good old, good old soul. So that is a shield. It's a, it's a shield from CME, it's a magnetic shield. You know, if, I'm sure we've uh, all seen, you know, know about this magnetic field and stuff, but if you don't, have a little picture. You know, the sun's rays. Solar winds, all the particles go to the earth. We've got magnetic field around it, so it deflects it around, so it doesn't strip the atmosphere. So then we get to still live. Yay! So, so yeah, it's a great shield. All right. And without that, so we'll be done for. Now, another thing with the uh, with the astrology and the you know the alchemy, you've got the sacred geometry and the divine. You know, you've got the sacred geometry. It turns out that although We'll say now, well, this guy is wrong, Ptolemy. Claudius Ptolemy used to put the Earth in the middle, geocentric orbits, yeah, from where we're looking. So you've got planets going around the Earth. And classically, you know, like, oh, he was wrong, got that wrong. But this guy, uh, Claudius Ptolemy, he was a mathematician, an astronomer, astrologer, geographer, music theorist. His uh, sciences went on to be important in the Byzantine, Islamic, and the Western European sciences. So this guy put the earth in the middle, right? And we'll say now in science, oh, you know, got that wrong. We realise now, you know, 
it's going around the earth oh, well, must have been stupid but no because if you go and check if you put the earth in the middle and check and draw the orbits they make these weird like sparograph patterns if you remember the old sparographs like a cog and then you put another cog inside with different positions to put the pen move it around it makes kind of spirally patterns well these are the patterns man they're like sick of geometry patterns for the people on the video Got some pictures, but you can you can put this in a browser. Just type um, geometric patterns of the orbits, and you get these spirograph type patterns like circular geometry. So we've got example here of Mercury, look, like loop the loop, loop spiral. Venus, I thought it was fascinating. She's got a bit of a flower in the middle, of five petals. Mars is a bit a little bit more complicated. Jupiter, big long orbits. Saturn seems to be like Jupiter's, but like three times the frequency. And Uranus, same again, but like many times more the frequency with the extra loop de loops. <laughs> right. So so Saturn takes 30 years to go around the sun, and a geometric pattern shows 30 loop de loops to show the retrogrades. Whereas from our perspective, we start catching up. And as the planet swings back around and it's you know is orbit, it will for a moment appear to slow down and stop and go backwards. That's why you get these like loop the loop patterns. Okay, so the sacred geometry is in there, even though it's wrong, quote unquote. It's this you're still getting these sacred geometry patterns in the way that the planets are moving when you look at it from here. So, in relation to us, we get sacred geometry patterns in the way that they very move on us. So, we've got sacred geometry in the sky anyway, right? Okay. And then the seven, these seven bodies, they relate to the seven chakras and, and the metals from alchemy as well. So the moon is a red. Okay, Mercury is orange. So you're coming up. Venus, yellow. The sun is green. Okay, so there's going to be more, you know, your solar plexus. Sun, solar, solar, solar. So, well, yeah. And then you go up to Mars, it's actually blue, not red. Interesting. Now that's inverted in the upside down, right? indigo next with jupiter saturn is actually pink the pink rings of saturn is what you burst through that's your crown chakra boom you burst through there burst through this chakra as we're as we're transmuting the lead into gold which is the you know what you're doing with the alchemy but what you're doing with your internal alchemy trying to turn your lead into gold trans transmute things All right so you've got these chakra wheels within wheels within wheels as you go up so activating these powers is said to be the purpose of life in the sort of Eastern philosophies in the sense of, you know, let's turn on our, our operator, let's turn on the machine, get it working so you can do stuff. Now, of course, you could nuance it and say, well, I've got a purpose in life to do this. And yeah, you might have that. But then, you know, it could be all sorts of little purposes you can make. They're just saying here and in the script, in the teachings of this stuff, it's yeah. Maybe you have got a purpose. Maybe mine's to be on the radio. But then there's also going to be, a, you know, a generic kind of way to look at it as well. There's different layers of perception and nuance you can go to in there. But, yeah. And the Hinduism, the talking, activating these. Uh, seven, well, if you activate them and get your Kundalini going, then you're going to have access to more of your tools, aren't you? Does it make sense to do that? In Hinduism, so we're a closed body when we come in. So then we acquire seven vices. And we must turn those vices into seven virtues. And this is the mastering of the holy science. So we may return back to the heavens. Okay. And this relates back to like the Santa Claus show, where the, the oil that goes down the spine and back up to return back to heaven and back down the spine to the, the sacrum at the bottom of the spine and then back up to the head, back to the heavens, which we'll describe a little bit more in a minute. But back to the associations. Okay, so we've got sacred geometry drawn by the, the planet movements, but only from when we look here, are they, you know, imprinted. So the plutonic solids, they're the so we're the we're the sacred geometry is that's the stuff that hold things together that holds the forms and the, the platonic elements as well the, they're the only shapes that fit inside of a sphere and touch the sides and these are coming down from the ether and get grosser and grosser they get larger and larger in number so 
with fire you've got the tetra the nitrogen four sides you know the eight sides the air spirit octa that's gas and oxygen water is the icosahedron liquid hydrogen earth is hexa a solid and the carbon and the so that's your four elements so fire air water and earth is tetra octa icosa and hexa so light light and gas and liquid and solid is nitrogen for light oxygen for gas liquid is a uh, hydrogen and then um because you know h2o and then um you know your solid is your carbon fifth element being the ether i described earlier i can't really well what i mentioned earlier sort of indescribable bit so in physics we see all these things happen it's either light it's either doing light it's doing gas it's doing liquid or it's doing solid and then that fifth element ether which i think greeks does chaos really just the chaos for those just men for the greeks just men how the ether works that's all and if we look at the main characters in some of these stories a lot you've got abraham and sarah jesus and mary king arthur and guinevere all these are the sun and the moon abraham and sarah sun and the moon jesus mary sun and the moon king arthur and guinevere sun and the moon the hero usually got the lieutenants nearby right and those lieutenants are mars jupiter and saturn exemplified quite wonderfully in uh in the old in thor actually in the norse mythology you think about thor so you've been in the marvel stuff recent so thor as the warriors three and that will be uh thandral the dashing well that's going to be mars because mars is much smaller than jupiter and saturn so mars can move fast so thandral the dashing that's mars Hogan the Grim, well, no, that is a Saturn, because Saturn is the Grim Reaper. So we've got Mars, Saturn, and who's that leaving? Volstagg the Enormous. Well, the clue's in the name there, because Enormous is the enormous planet Jupiter, which is also known in astrology as the lucky planet, because it's exp expansive. Right? So, yeah, we've got the sun and the moon yeah and then the warrior is free the five elements and of course the church of peter in rome is the church of jupiter right but it's also the church of christ at the same time christ the sun so it's the church of the sun but it's also the church of jupiter but also it's the church of saturn right it's done deliberately so it's it's done deliberately it's a saturnarian church okay and the, and the church in the latin in the latin church is they wearing they're wearing a black because saturn is the grim reaper so romans uh church of peter is also the church of jupiter is also the church of christ the latin ones are the church of saturn christ is the hottest body so that's the sun and the saturn is the coldest and they're considered the twins jesus and satan rudolf steiner i noticed uh, mentioned that uh no there's twins the twins jesus are the twin i don't know I, this is what it's going to be i don't know i did that talk and read that but I'm going to presume that's what that's going to be because this is where stuff's coming from. It's talking about the same thing. And you'll notice Jupiter, the Church of Peter, well, if, you, if you slow it down, like we say in the rappers, Jupiter is a Jewish Peter. Right? It's a Jewish Peter. Jew, Peter, Jupiter. So we've got that. So we've got Jupiter. And then. Um, so we've got all these 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 levels of symbolism and these kind of associations you know so so think about it, it's just for about 
So the Warriors free with Thor. He's got Mars, uh, Thandral the Dashian. He's got um, Saturn with Ogun the Grim. And he's got Jupiter with Falstag the Enormous. Church of Peter, Church of Rome, Church of Jew Peter. Yeah. Saturn area in the Latin, Latin uh, side of things wearing black for the Grim Reaper. Hottest body, the sun. And the coldest body, Saturn. Yeah, the gold in the lead. The twins. And in masonry, famously, it's got 33 degrees. Well, there's 33 vertebrae in the human spine. They're the 33 levels. To get to the... Because you've, you've got the Christ in you, the Christos oil. And we're covered in the, uh, the show with Santa Claus and the Claustrum. So, yeah, I mean, it's got... You've got so... You've got all these numbers coming up. Okay, but we'll get to this. We'll get to how this works now because these 12 disciples, as well, because you've got, you know, you've got these, um, these, the five elements and then and the extra and the seven bodies. You've got 33 vertebrae. And then, of course, you've got, You've got 12 cranial nerves, talking about your vertebrae. And, and this Christos oil that we've covered before. And so you've got these, yeah, we'll do some pictures up. Let's get this up. It gets a bit complicated there, so do some brain science in a minute. So if we just, right, so we've got the plutonic solids then. And we've got the different faces on them. And they get bigger and more complicated. We don't generally see that. We see that as frequencies go higher. They'll get a little, you know, usually more complex. There's more stuff going on with them. Okay. And and this, we've got these circular geometries. We've got, the, we've got them uh, scaling up in the periodic elements. We've got the ram's horn as well, up in the head, the hippocampus, in the brain. So I'll get some images of this. What the hell a sheep got to do was a, was the ram. But if you look at the ram's horn, check this look. That's, you know, with sort of reference to Jesus. You've got this, you know, <laughs> this kind of. It's in the center of the brain. It's totally like it's showing you, and if you people that can see on the video, it's showing there's a structure in the center of the brain. It looks a bit like a ram right in the center. And the reason that matters is because this, all this stuff is explaining a process that goes on in your body, like a technical scientific process that goes on in your body. And it's telling you how it works. In exactly the same way as if you read about, if you read the Vedas and read about the Vimanas and stuff and the UFOs that they're supposed to, they tell you how to make them. I need these rods of granite and stuff, and it's got to be like this. And they, they kind of tell you straight up. So, you know, so we'll get into some brain science in a minute. We've we'll had a look at some of the sacred geometry, some religious connotations, but we'll get into some brain science with Vala in a sec. I'm just going to drop off and just quick, quick, drop, grab a drink couple of minute break but when we come back we'll have a look at uh, some 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 brain mechanism stuff and we'll see why it works man why the meditating works why this kundalini practice works why you get such a thing as the book in the 60s called kundalini psychosis written by some uh, like indian guru because he's warning people then it can drive you it looks the same as a psychiatric break when you have a when you get the breakthrough it looks like you've gone nuts. And that's why you get people that come through going, oh, I'm the son of God. Oh, I'm, I'm... And they think you've got, like, David Icke and stuff, and you think they've gone nuts, and they haven't. They haven't. Because they are. But they've felt it. For real. For real. Because something's, you know, something's happened that have had actual spiritual experience, and they are, and they've realized it. It's like taking um, a psychedelic, isn't it? You're like... <gasps> You know, it can fade off after a while. But when you've just done it, you're like, oh, baby, baby, baby. you know, so it works. Is that this stuff works, man? That otherwise, there won't be, um, you know, 
They wouldn't be like Hindu Vedic types writing books called Kundalini Psychosis, would they? Anyway, put a bit of music on, put this funky music on, and then uh, I'll come back in just a sec. Thanks for my podcast, Valentine's Day. Me and Martin, I'll be back after I've had a little dance. Woo! Nice tune, awesome tune. I wonder who made that. <laughs> yeah, it was me. Anyway, thanks for thanks for coming back. Uh, you ain't left, have you? Come back. No, thanks for coming back. Welcome back to the show, Exo Minds Podcast, on Valentine's Day, fourteenth Tuesday, twenty twenty three. Oh yeah, we're gonna do brains. That's right, we're gonna do brains. Once I find my lighter, oh, I'll use this. Yeah, look, talking to the sun. Look, let's use some plasma to light me. Oh. It's weird. I got a plasma. I got a plasma thing. It's mad. I, got, I can't believe it. I'm, honestly, I'm not joking, man. I remember the 80s like it was yesterday. This is weird. But anyway. <laughs> anyway, Eggs on Minds podcast, Astrotheology. Shouts out to uh, Santos Bacani because he, he's a good, cool guy. Totally forgot about him for a while, so I'm trying to get him on the show. This is a little common on our show, Joe. But anyway, yeah, let's get back to this then, brain science. So this is the funky stuff I've realized. I found this out, and I want to share it with you. So we did this show about how there's this Christos oil, and we'll, we'll get into it again. I'll quickly cover it again. But we did the show about the Santa Claus of Christmas and found out that Santa Claus coming down the chimney was really about it's really about an oil that comes out your brain <laughs> and it's a sacred thing and that's and it goes up and down your spine okay so this you know the ram of god this is, this is showing you the structure in fact while we're on this uh, picture let me just show you the um oh, what's that famous painting called uh or just like adam god hand i should do it it's something about adam that's it. The famous picture here, look, called The Creation of Adam. That's it, by Michelangelo. And you got, it's a famous one where you got, like, well, it's apparently God in the sky, a load of angels behind the dude, reaching down to some naked dude, and the fingers are about to touch. It's a famous picture. 
but check the throne that God's on. There's a brain. There's a brain. There's a cerebrum. Totally a, cere totally a brain. <laughs> right. In fact, there's another picture, though, where somebody's drew over it, all the segments of the brain. Look, the brains, the brains. The brains, boss, the brains. <laughs> right. So, I don't know. Is that a brain to me? Definitely shaped just like a brain. And all this stuff seems to be about brains. So, you know, and that's what it is. Because it's telling us that this how it goes then. So, 33 levels of masonry. 33 levels of the vertebrae in this human spine. You've got the Christ in you. The crystal soul that travels up the spine. And, and when it reaches the last bone, when it's getting to the top, it crosses... On the cross, it crosses the medulla oblongata, where there's 12 cranial nerves. You've got your buddies up there, 12 cranial nerve disciples kept close by. Okay, so the medulla oblongata, let's, uh, I think we've got a description of this somewhere. Medulla oblongata. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 -da. There we go. Medulla oblongata. It's a real thing. I just want to show you. I'm not just making words up. <laughs> what are the five functions of the medulla oblongata? The medulla oblongata is responsible for regulating several basic functions of the autonomic nervous system, including respiration, breathing, yoga, respiration, cardiac function, chi, breathing, yoga. And uh, <laughs> vasodilation, so that's your good blood flow. Reflexes, mm, martial arts. Reflexes like uh, vomiting, coughing, sneezing, and swallowing. Okay, so they're like basic standard functions. And sneezing, I'm glad it mentions sneezing, because I happen to know, just happen to know from martial arts, if you press your elbow, there where your funny bone is, there's a nerve just behind there, right? If you're going to sneeze and you find that nerve, and press it. You've got to wiggle around for it. You'll know when you've got it because it really hurts if you press it. Press it as hard as you can when you sneeze. Just press it as much as you can take. That bit behind your funny bone, there's a nerve there. You press that, it stops the sneeze. If you catch it in time, it'll stop it. You've got to practice finding it quick. But it'll stop a sneeze every time. You can even do it to other people. You just grab the rubber quick. Can't you magic? <laughs> but yeah, it all links together. This stuff links together. So the Christos oil, it will travel up your spine, get to the last bone, and be crossing the medulla oblongata, where it's got its 12 disciples, the cranial nerves. Okay. So yeah, we've got 20, uh, 12 vertebrae. Let's see if we can find some of these cranial nerves. I think I've got some pictures. You got 12 cranial nerves, look. I'll get this up. And I just want you to know this is all real. It's all real. Look, 12 cranial nerves. This is 12 disciples. And it got some more difficult to remember names. You know, Peter and Paul is a lot easier than Ocular Motor 3. You know, Truck to Linear 4. Dag Dusen 4. You know what I'm saying? Trigem, uh, I mean, Optic 2. That's not so bad. Facial. Uh, do you want a facial set? I don't think I want a facial seven, thanks. It sounds like the kind of thing that Bang Brothers do. No, thank you. But no, yeah, just to get him. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, what? what is this? We've got 12 disciples. Okay, so oil comes up, crosses the medulla oblongata, which is responsible for these basic autonomic functions, where it meets 12 cranial nerves. They all meet together there, 12 disciples close by. Responsible for the aforementioned. And that's where the Christos gets crucified at the crossing point. As we discussed, say, in the Santa Claus show as well. Because there's a structure called the claustrum. It looks like, you know, the pitch roof of a log cabin. It's even that shape. Anyway. So above the shoulders, we're going up the neck. We're going to the crossing point of the vagus nerve. Okay. And this is the vagus nerve because it's a vagrant nerve. As in, it wanders around your body. Like it's a vagrant nerve. It's almost like it's um, like a wandering planet, almost. 
you know, and it's supposedly the vagus nerve. It's a va it's called that because it's vagar and it wanders through the throughout the body and it will do its jobs maintaining the vital autonomic functions, like you know, feeding the heart and stuff. And and so the idea is that it will go around and do its thing. And this is all returned to heaven in the cerebellum, which we see in the seat of God. Right? And so Aries, the ram, you know, that's, we saw the structure. It's like a structure and saying your head looks like Aries, the ram. What the sheep got to do with enlightenment and not any of this stuff? Aries, the ram, the lamb of God. That's mentioned in the Bible 29 times. Again, I put it to you. What's a sheep got to do with enlightenment? Unless the structure's there that's telling you, telling you the shape to look for. It's telling you how this stuff works. Technical instructions. You yourself are even another little world and have within you the sun and the moon and also the stars. Yeah. That's all, it's all scripture stuff. That's from, uh, well, don't matter, it's, it's a better one. Leonardo da Vinci, the workings of the human body are an analogy for the workings of the universe. Yeah. When you heat things up, they go up, heat rises up to the head. Head, heaven. Yeah, head is heaven. All right. And your hell is your heels. You heel. Yeah, up and down. Up and down. I think that's what it's uh, telling us about the crystal saw. I don't know what it's about myself. So we've got, oh, I've oh, got people in chat. I forgot people in chat. Yeah. So Iowaks has got uh, Iowaks. So we're up. You've got, uh, what's that? I understand what you're saying, and I've never thought about it, but in the beginning of civilization after the fall, they were dissecting people and, and drawing it. Well, this, that's the thing, Iwax. That's it. That's it. Because at some point in history, people have probably done that. Egyptians done it, and then it gets like forgotten. And then as Western science, a great point, actually, in Western science, to go to transition from alchemy to science, people have had to go and do this stuff. And you know, and there was a time where you weren't allowed to study it, do science, because it's blasphemy. You get caught, like likes of Copernicus and um, uh, Giorgiano, uh, Bruno, uh, yeah, it's, it's not relevant for this one. But yeah, some people been executed for this stuff, hurt bad, even miracle makers. And there's a good point in that. And yeah, so people back then had to go and get bodies, corpses, pay people off, and go and chop them up, and go and have a look, and draw it. That's right. You know, it's not a fun job, but that's. But if it, if it can stop people getting sick, some people have had to go and do that. So, yeah, yeah, it's a good point, poignant there. How it works, nice one. So yeah, the human body is an analogy for the workings of the universe, according to Da Vinci. Heal is hell. Head is heaven. Cerebral oil. It first. It gets in the body, and then you've got 12 systems of the body when it's fully developed. Fully developed body's got 12 systems. The meridian systems in, like, the sort of um, Eastern philosophies. So, again, that number 12 again. And, yeah, 12 um, uh, cranial nerves. And uh, the meridian the flow as well, the way that uh, your meridian lines work. Yeah, let's get a picture of this. The daily course of your... Meridian energy lines. This is a real thing. It's from Chinese medicine. So yeah, you've got you've got this kind of daily cycle. So you've got your heart. Yeah, let's get a bit closer. So you've got your heart, your spleen, your lungs, and your liver. It just is a cycle that goes around. So you've got your heart, your small intestines, uh, then your bladder, your kidney, and then that's. Uh, pericardium, yeah, and as it goes to the bottom, to your gallbladder, comes back up again. Yeah, if you're following a clock from left to right. So start, actually, position one says liver, lungs, large intestine, stomach, spleen, heart, small intestine, bladder, kidneys, uh, pericardium, something there, I'm not sure, trickle, something, and then gallbladder. So this is the route, and it's showing you that you know that you've got the a map for each system for where it is on your body, and these are exactly these are the pressure points that you use. 
these are the river channels that you're looking for when you're doing martial arts. Once you've learnt it for a bit, you'll learn certain pressure points on these meridian lines. So, do you know what I mean? You can attack a certain organ, kind of thing. As you press certain orders, if you if you can get, I mean, it's hard to pull it off in a fight, but if you know a certain order to do them in that you can pull off in a fight, you can paralyze someone. The moment to per temporarily. You can paralyze a person, hit him four or five times in the right spots. If you carry on hitting him, it's called Dimac striking. That's where the five point palm exploding heart technique comes from in Kill Bill. It's coming from a real principle. So anyway, yeah, so we've got these uh we've got these these 12 disciples, 12 cranial nerves, 12 meridian lines. Think about it. You've got these 12 circuits, they're energy circuits, big central power column down the middle. And you can, and you can pulse. Um, you know, let's say, uh, let's say it's like a USB C where it can go both ways. So you can send data up it and energy back and forth. You know what I'm saying? So you got, that's, you know. So yeah, the cerebral fluid. Uh, the first system in the body. This uh, the cerebral spinal spinal oil is the first system in the body, and then because you've got the others, the the twelve, you know, systems that they're anyway for your your nerves. And I think that's why they've picked the stars of the way that they have and those archetypes to explain all this stuff and lined it up where where the Milky Way is. They've done it in such a way so you can follow it along the line as if you're traveling along a river, you know, and then they've got the River Nile. And I think they're trying to do that as above, so below to represent now this is the river of going up your spine as well. Do you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So there was a guy called... Um, what was his first name? Veto alias. Let's get this guy up. Mahadi, Cedars, Kabbalistic Tree of Life. Oh, that was another one as well. The Kabbalistic Tree of Life's got the spheres as well. But yeah, there was a guy called uh, Veracelius who's uh, first to differentiate the difference between a uh, grey and white matter. He distinguished it quite clearly because this is difference with this stuff because you're transmuting things. You're going lead to gold. It's you're going like basic levels to higher levels sort of thing. So that's how I'm thinking of it. So it's interesting then I find out there's a gray matter and a white matter. But whenever we think of the brain, the workings of the brain, I tend to always think of gray matter. I don't really think of white matter. I always think, oh, the gray matter is the thinking matter. But no, it's white, isn't it? Brains, you know. So there's gray and white matter. I didn't know about this. So I thought, well, let's, uh, let's jump in on this one then because there's uh, a more local article on this one let's have a look number seven symbolism mine's article da, 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 da. right let's get this up a couple of vertebrae da, 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 da. yeah let me just uh i'll jump off it on the back of here so open this hyperlink ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. if it wants to open yeah i'll share the screen let's to uh, prove this here we go. And this is from a uh, Dana.org, a Dana Foundation, and the Cerebrum Dana Foundation, like a brain uh, foundation for neuroscience and stuff. Okay, so it says, uh, yeah, why uh, white brain matters. If set out to understand the building lighting system, examine the, the, the outlets and the walls and the basement, you might be pretty puzzled. Yeah, so if you set out to understand the, a building's lighting system but examined only the fixtures, switches, and outlets, never the wiring in the walls of the basement, you might be pretty puzzled. Something like that has happened in the study of the brain, suggests behavioral neurologist Christopher Philly. Scientists now beginning to probe the long-neglected half of the brain called the white matter are discovering how it specializes. I can't believe they've got a grammatical typo right there. Look, damn it. You that will come up in a spell check as well. They must do better. It's supposed to be an academic site. Sorry. Sorry. It's just, ugh. I won't get away with it. I get marked down for that in an assignment. Anyway, not bitter. <laughs> <laughs> it's no good. It's supposed to be academics. Mr. Spacer. Jesus. Come on. Get back to school. Anyway, 
It matters. <laughs> Scientists, uh, see, I can't trust this article now. No idea. Scientists are now beginning to probe the non-neglected half of the brain called white matter are discovering now it specializes in connectivity. Oh, hello. With bundles of insulated wiring that link neurons within the within and between gray matter areas into assembles that may produce the light of consciousness mental functioning. Mm, the light of conscious mental functioning, the light. A pioneer of the research of the white matter uh, proposes a new field of study that would bring the other half of the brain into the mainstream of neuroscience. Now, that's quite a statement, I think, the other half of the brain. So we've not even been dealing with half of it so far. Right? Right, and get this. I'll do you one further. I'll do you one further. Why is Gamora? Check this. All right, check this. You're not going to believe this. I'm going to say it and I'm going to show you straight away. All right, let me get his uh, comparison picture because that's a crappy picture. That's no good. Let me get a better picture. The man with no brain. You heard me? I'm just going to type that. In fact, well, I'll type it in front of you. You can see just a regular browser search. The man with no brain. Oh, the man. Yeah, let's have a science alert. Meet the man who lives normally with 90% damage to his brain. Let's get rid of this. A Frenchman who lives a relatively normal life, healthy despite 97 degrees to his brain, is causing scientists to rethink what is, a, from a biological perspective, is consciousness to us. Right? This isn't even the story I'm looking for. Do you know what I'm saying? Right? So we've got that, which we'll get to. But check this. So we've got that guy. As the French guy. Is this going to be the same guy? You, you, I mean, you imagine this. And this is a different guy, totally different guy. So it's from New Scientist. I'll just get rid of all this. Can we steal your data? No. Oh. Look, look at this guy. <laughs> so, look. On the right of these pictures, if you can see it, this is a typical brain. You've got four pictures here, one from the top. There's uh, two brain scans, different people, one, one from the top and then one from the side. The ones on the right are regular ones, look, folks. There's a, and the ones on the left are this guy, this math student. They say they call him math genius. I don't know if he's officially a genius. But, yeah, he's good at maths, math student. And, uh, yeah, and so the story goes, this guy, a man with an unusually tiny brain manages to live an entirely normal life despite his condition, which was caused by a fluid buildup in his skull. Scans of the 44-year-old man's brain showing that a huge fluid-filled chamber called the ventricle took up most of the room in his skull, leaving little more than a thin sheet of actual brain tissue. It is hard for me to to say exactly the percentage of reduction of his brain since we did not use software to measure its volume, but visually it's more than 50 to 75% reduction. Okay. So I remember reading about this before and there's saying they've had to completely rethink the way that the brain works and say, well, it must be, it's still got the synaptic fluid. This is the thing. So it's it ain't got the matter, but it's got the synaptic fluid. And it's working okay. So what's that? You tell me. You tell me because when we go on with this, um, we'll go on with this. We'll have to wrap up soon. But in the universal mind, I mean, with all this stuff, you've got this crystal soil. And it's going through the cranium, the 12 nerves. It, I don't know. It looks like the oil is the thing that matters. <laughs> and the nerves. But anyway, moving on. In the universal mind, the Kabbalistic tree of life as the ten sephiroths or spheres, ten concentric rings, descend from the universal mind into the universal uh, mind thinkers. We've got 12 conditions, the 12 vices we need to deter to turn into, the, uh, sorry, the seven conditions 
the seven vices, you know, the deadly sins, that we have to turn into the, the virtuous, transmute the lead into gold. And that way we ascend up Jacob's ladder, return into the unconditional consciousness that we had in the beginning. Again, seven planets, seven chakras, they're nothing but conditions. They're just conditions of our consciousness from when it, it used to be unconditioned and now it's conditioned. And we have to sublimate these energies to change the polarity. And the three elements of alchemy, what's known as the tree of prima, it, that defines uh, the human identity as sulfur being the body. That's the emotion and the desire. So sulfur and salt. Okay. Sulfur is the emotional body and the emotions and desires. The salt is the physical body and mercury is epitomizes the spirit, the imagination and the uh, moral judgment and the high mental faculties. So by understanding the chemical nature of these, physicians could then look for a means of curing diseases, right? And that's what it's all for. This is where, say, we see the daily course of the meridian lines, and then there's 12 of them, and then 12 nerves. This is your operating system, folks. John saw it rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Upon his horn, ten crowns. Upon his heads. It's the blasphemy. It's Revelations 13.1. It's the monster from the sea. The seven heads. It's, just, it's all about your chakra stuff. Seven reapers of the golden grain, seven harvesters, sorry, uh, 12 reapers, 12 harvesters, there's 12 builders, the 12 nerves, your 12 disciples, 12 masons, 12 potters, 12 weavers of the patterns, 12 rowers for Horus, 12 sailors in the ship of Ra, the sun, there's 12 powers of the sun god's intelligence, and the ancient philosophies are bringing this out, that sunlight and the divine light is the ultimate result of meditation the light of the sun is the pure energy of intellect said proclus and the ventricle this this guy's cerebral fluid is in the ventricle it's it's this is the stuff you know the negative fluid goes down the eater as blue and there's a uh, and we're to the sacrum and as your pumping station where the fused vertebrae are as we talked about before and at the top of the head, at the base of the brain, right at the bottom of the brain, but the top of the spine, there's the top of the pumping station, which is the, the spheroid. There's a bone in your brain. <laughs> you know what? I'll just post it again so you can see. The real things. So you've got the spheroid and the occipital bone. And that's at the floor of the brain. When you breathe, those bones are perturbed by each other. All right, and they're in the center of the skull. That's why we've got the ram showing you where it is in the center of the skull. And that pumps it, pumps it down. Breathing causes your, your sacrum, which is your fused vertebrae at the bottom, to rock back and forward. So at the bottom of your spine, you've got the fused vertebrae. They rock back and forward, pumping the oil up. So the bones in the brain pump it down. And breathing makes the bottom of your spine pump it back up. So this is why every time, watch the moon, because what happens is every time the moon, the moon throughout the month, it spends two and a half days in every zodiac sign. So when it's in your sun sign, you've got two and a half days of it planting a germ in your chest, as in germination, a special seed. And if you don't have sex for a month and you try and think nice, don't think negative thoughts and have a clean living and do the purity stuff, you do that for a month. When your second seed gets planted, the first one will get triggered to start going up into your brain. And that's when you'll start getting that oil motion going. So you've got to not have sex for at least two months, let's say, just to make sure you catch the right day. But yeah, find out what day the moon is in your sun sign each month. And that's the day when your germ is going to get planted in your seed. And if you have a, a month clean of not ejaculating, that's why, that's why you save it. That's why you save it, because then you can supercharge it the next time to blast on through, and you literally will light up the thalamus inside your head. Like you, you know, like you, that's why you see stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, so I don't know. Have a look. We'll try and get Santos on. Um, I think we're on about an hour now, so we'll wrap up soon. <laughs> Apart from a half an hour where I kind of uh, screwed up, but a few technical issues, trying to get the camera and the sound through. But we got there. Thanks to the listeners.
Empty box. That's how uh, Jay's feeling sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, up and down, up and down, isn't it? How can you ever feel full if you've never known empty, my friend? But we need this stuff. This is the annoying thing about it, isn't it? Without like crap things happening, we can't appreciate good stuff, can we? You know what I mean? Without people walking on us, we can't appreciate the times when people help us, isn't it? As that goes, man, that's the. Uh, it's the madness of life. <laughs> but yeah, got some guests. Yeah, I'm scheduling guests coming up, coming months. I get um, hopefully Dr. Shani Brogan on next week. Should be next week. Should be cool with it. Uh, yeah, Thursday I think. So do a bit of a voodoo chat on that one. But yeah, look at this stuff. I'm gonna. I'll stick it in the description again. So you can follow up. We'll try and get Santos on. Have a proper. A good old chit chat on this one, probably after two hours, I would think. But yeah, Mr. Astrotheology, thanks for that. Oh, Chris Charman, yeah. Yeah, it's getting back on track with all this stuff, the researching. I forget, you know, well, I don't forget. <laughs> but I mean, I, I, I don't research anymore. I'm still winging it from all the old stuff. I'm, <laughs> I'm getting back on that again soon. I'm getting more structured. I'm about doing my garden for what I need doing there. So I can start rearranging all this lot and yeah, get, get some more stuff in. But yeah, got guests coming on the way. So we do try and do one a month. Uh, I think I think Mike, my mate, Michael Strange, Trouble Minds Radio, I think he's having a break for a bit. So I might do some, I might double up, start doing some extra shows, feed the listeners so they don't starve. You know what I mean? Pinch a few along the way, you know it is. So we'll see, anyway. <laughs> but take care, folks. Valentine's Day. If you haven't had, a, if you haven't had any lovings tonight, give yourself some, man. Show up for yourself. Be there. Be there. Treat yourself. Even if you're on your own. Having some special time. Just, you know. But seriously, take care of yourself. Look after yourself. Don't forget you. That's my message for Valentine's Day. Don't forget about you. Because it's easy to do when you're a nice person. And, and uh, yeah, check this stuff out. Definitely. Or, or if you find anything interesting, look it up. Please leave comments if you feel like saying anything. You know, unless you want to troll, just for sake of trolling, which you can do. We'll just ignore it, probably. But anywho, my show, I can do the other one. I could do it all with my eyes closed. Although I don't think I'm going to do that unorthodox a show where I just don't have any sound or video like we did for half an hour. Tried it. You didn't seem to like it. So I'm trying to be radical. <laughs> anyway, just kidding. Let's have, let's have, oh, oh, should we get, this is all unorthodox. I'll have an intro as my outro music. Yeah. Yeah. Although the sound sounds a bit weird. Ooh. Ooh. Oh well. We'll have to just put up with that weird sound. Might just my computer going a bit slow. Anyway, next time. Exxon Minds Podcast, Liam Martin. We're back tomorrow. And then hopefully next week we should have a guest on. I don't know the show tomorrow. But I think it might be about sand batteries. I know, random. There's a reason. Anyway, take it easy, folks. I'll catch you soon.